media viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 days of prayer. It's been a blessing, a blessing to many who are viewing. I want to thank you so much for those who are calling and telling me how God is blessing you through this ministry of prayer. And I want to encourage you to not just keep it to yourself, but share with as many friends as you can, because it is in this way we receive the presence of God and his blessings in our lives. Today we are on day 20th. And we want to praise the Lord for his doing and his grace and his mercy upon our lives. And we are winding up the word series. And uh, starting uh, tomorrow Monday, we are starting the, another series of Christ our righteousness. You, you don't want to miss that because we'll be interacting with that beautiful pieces of the scriptures that speaks about the righteousness of Christ and how we need to relate to that righteousness of Christ. But today, as we wind up the word series, we will be guided by the text of the book of Joel, chapter 1. Uh, these are some of books that people really go to read, and uh, I want to invite you to you know, join me as we share from the text of uh, Joel, chapter 1, and verse number 1, 2, and 3, and then we will take a moment to pray. We are just winding up the word series, and uh, this uh, message today, it's emphasizing on sharing the word with your children. Speak the word of God. Tell them as it is, because the word of God, when it has come to us, there is judgment. So we are looking at that concept uh, from the book of Joel. But before we go there, let's seek the, the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the privilege of this a moment when we come before you in prayer this morning. Some of us, of course, who would be watching this in the afternoon or in the evening, but whatever time they are able to get this, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we invite you to guide our thoughts and speak to us as we connect through the scriptures. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank the Lord. The word of God from the book of Joel, chapter 1. 1, verse 1 down to 3, it says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of uh, Pethuel, Hear, base ye old men, and give ye, O ye inhabitants of the land, hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Verse number 3, Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children other generations. <laughs> Let me read one more time. Very interesting text here. The one of, of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear, this, ye old men, and give ye, all ye inhabitants of the land, hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children other generations. You see, the prophet Joel, scholars still debate as what was exactly his occupation. Was he a priest, or was he a prophet, or was he both a prophet and a priest? You know, because once you start getting into this book of Joel, you, you, you will see he's, um, he's, he's, he's within, you know, he's using terminologies that are found in the priestly ministry and, of course, in the prophet ministry. But wherever uh, you want to look at um, or think Joel is, whether a prophet um, or a priest or he was both, what is important for me as you go to get a moment of prayer is how the book opens. That the word of the Lord came to Joel. We have been discussing about the word of God and its effect in our life, its influence in our life, the, the power of the word of God and how the word of God has, is, you know, is, 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 has power in the ability to transform us, to renew us, to redirect us, to show us God's purposes for our lives. And, and if we, we hearken not to the word of God, then we, 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 we remain doomed. You see, it is critical and paramount for 
everyone who interacts with the word of God to obey the word of God. I mean, one musician saying there is no any other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and to obey. Now, whatever God speaks, his, his words shall not come and go in vain. He speaks to us because he knows our situations. And when he calls Joel, the prophet Joel, he tells him, this is what I want you to listen and get very well and go and speak to these people. Go and speak to them the way I'm speaking to them and tell them, hear this. You see, when the word of God comes to us, God expects us to hear the word of God, to hear that word. And, 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 and this time to hear, it, it means to, to take it to the heart, to allow it to transform us, to allow us to make it have its way in our lives. Hear these, ye old men, and give ear all the, the inhabitants of the land. In other words, God speaks to all people. You know, the terms used here, the phrases here, communicate God's interest to reach out to everyone in the society. The young, the old, the learning, the educated, the sick and good in health, all the, the poor and the rich. God expects the same word to reach out to them and have its way. And so he tells them, hear this, ye old men, and give here all ye inhabitants of the land. Have this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? God, of course, you know, the prophets, the prophecies of Joel and, and, and the people you're talking to, you know, many calamities then come. Many, of course, you'd see uh, when you go down reading there, Joel speaks of blockcast and speaks of some, some symbols that communicate to the enemies that had attacked, you know, uh, the, the, the children of Israel. Uh, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Greece, the Rome, all and attacked Israel. And Israel was being reduced into something useless. They, they, they were living in fear and terrified, you know. And, and indeed, there's a time when we need to, to be and feel the experience of joy because we are being attacked from every side, not COVID, not political turmoils, nations rising against nations, economic times are dwindling every day. We, 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 many of us are struggling in this life. And, and we, I mean, as it was, we're being abandoned from every side. Yet, we, most of us are not able to see God communicating and sending messages to us through all these situations and, and occurrences and calamities. And so he says, uh, has this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? You know, events will continue unfolding. You know, when we talk about prophecies, we're dealing with events that unfold and happen, not just by chance, but divine, by, 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 by divine design. God allowing them to come just to awaken us from our sleep, just to communicate to us and tell us days are evil. Wake up and, and live uh, you know, as people who know that we are in the very end time. And this is where we are, friends, that we need, as, as, as we go through these 40 days of prayer also, take time to reflect on the prophetic message and remember where we are and think of where we are and see how we bring it vividly to our own hearts and to our friends and influence them with the word of God that we may not live this life like the world people are living. We may not see the calamities that are befalling us like the way people look at them. We may not interpret them the way the world interprets them because we know there are things that God are causing to happen just to awaken us, but also, of course, as a matter of fulfillment of prophecies. In verse number three, it says, Tell ye your children of it, speak these things. But let's not just speak of the gospel. But let's also tell them all the prophecies. Let's tell them what God said of old. Things that would happen are the things that are happening. And we can see to the children and tell them, when you, know, when you see things unfolding and happening this way, this is not just occurrences of events in the world. This is in the line with the prophecies of God. This is what God gave us as signs of the second coming. And you need to let the children know that indeed we are living in the very last days. We don't have much time to stay here. And so that they can be preserved through the word. It says, tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children. Pass this from one generation to another. Tell them of the soon coming of Christ. Tell them of the evils that accompany the, the end days. Tell them of how the world will look like when Jesus is about to come. That they can understand how to order their lives in accordance to the urgency of the time that we are living in. That Christ is coming and the word of God is the lamp unto our feet. It is the light 
And if we neglect the subject of the word of God, if we neglect the ministry of the word of God right in our families, then we are growing a generation that is not conscious of the end times. And we will be caught up on our like the world. But God will love that his people whose word has become light on their path that we may not live in darkness. We may, we may not be caught and aware, but we shall do well as we look at the scriptures and especially the prophetic message that we can be indeed illuminated by the reality of the scriptures and live a life that is in line with the expectations of the word of God. It says, so tell your children of it and let your children tell their children and their children are the generation. In other words, stay here in the scripture. Stay here in the scripture. This is heritage. This is heritage. Pass it on to your people. Pass it on to your children. This is an investment every parent ought to think about. Many times as parents, we are, we are busy investing in the worldly pursuits for our children. You know, our children. You know, giving them the very good education, giving them, uh, connecting them with people who matter, you know. But, but we forget that they, they, oh, this is nothing without the word of God. And so God is appealing to us as we wind up the ministry of the word and get into another very important series of Christ of righteousness that we will embrace the word of God. We will live by the word of God. We will be challenged by the word of God. We will be transformed by the word of God. We will be guided by the word of God. We will live as a people of light because the scriptures are open before us every day of our lifetime. Let our children know that we as parents value the word of God. When your child sees how much value you give to the word of God, they will take it seriously. So how much time do you spend at home reading the word of God, opening the scripture to your children? Whatever you do at home, it makes them understand the importance of the scriptures. It's my prayer that as you take time to pray this morning, that you will think through these words God is appealing as well that go and speak to the old people. Go speak to the young people. Go speak to the children and tell them my word has come to them. And these things they are seeing, they are bound to happen because this is in the prophets. And they then ought to prepare themselves. And when you go down there, I have no time to go down there, this beautiful text of the prophecies of Joel, speaking uh, God lamenting, and, but not just lamenting, but calling us out of our stupor, calling us out of drunkenness, calling us out of a slumber life, calling us to awaken, to open our eyes, and to embrace the scriptures, that we may live by scripture and scripture alone, because this is the only light we have to live this life. So it says, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and the children, another generation, is my prayer that this word of God minister not just to you, but to your entire family, that your children's heart may have a space for the word of God, and they may be transformed by the word of God, and they may be prepared prepared and preserved by this word of God. And we have nothing to lose because once we have Christ on our side, then we have everything we needed. So join with me as we pray today. Let's pray that we may hearken to the word of God and allow it to work its miracles in us the way God has expected that his children shall live in light. Join me. Remember the seven member list that we have Pray for it as you pray right now and many other things that God may appeal to you. I pray that you will join with me in this prayer moment as we speak to the Lord and we ask him to guide us, embracing the word. Let's pray together. A gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the pre precious privilege that we have to be before you this morning or evening or afternoon, wherever time we or my viewer would be watching but we thank you for this special privilege that we have to speak from the scriptures we have so far our whole week discussed the ministry of your word in our lives and as we come to the end today lord we are praying that may this word 
have its way in our lives. May your word of truth have its way in our lives. May it work in us. Like we saw he is able to pierce through the, the, the dividing asunder of marrows and bones. May it, Lord, have its way, I pray, that we will never be the same because the word of God has had its way in our lives. I pray that you may give us courage and confidence to sit down our children at home and open the scriptures before them and tell them this is all that is important in this life, that they may know that their lives will be meaningful as they will live in accordance with the will of the scriptures, that they will treasure your word. Like David says, your word have I treasured and hid in my heart that I may not sin against you, that we can educate our children. It is the word of God that it keeps us controlled and checked from excesses of this world. This is truly the light of our path. So Lord, we pray that you will bless us with the presence of your word in our hearts through the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. We shall be able to speak it out in season and out of season. Share with our friends and share with our family members and share with our colleagues at workplaces. Share every opportunity we get because this is a way to transform the world. Now as we begin a new week, Lord, of talking about Christ our righteousness, how I pray that you may Keep in our heart a desire to be at the feet of Jesus as we look at him and look at his righteousness, that our righteousness may diminish as his righteousness may increase and dominate. The Lord, we shall say, we thank you, Lord, for we have found you and we are experiencing your grace. And we shall be revived as we go through this for the days of prayer and be equipped for the soon coming. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for staying tuned every day, waiting upon this program. I thank you so much. And I want to thank you also for many of you who have subscribed and are sharing this program. But if you have not subscribed to our channel, just click that red button there, that every time when these, uh, you know, series of programs come, you are able to be notified and you can be able to share. But more importantly, share with as many friends. I don't know whether you're sharing, by the way. But of course, I know there are those who are calling me, they're telling me, Pastor, I'm sharing, uh, my sister is appreciating, my brother is appreciating. I, I don't have to mention your names, those who are talking to me, but I thank you for being part of this ministry. Remember, you don't know who needs this message. Just share generously with as many as you can, that many will be blessed as you go through the 40 days of prayer experience. God be with you. Till tomorrow.